In this video, we're going to be discussing merge sort. This is a very classic sorting algorithm. It's sort the classic divide and conquer algorithm that we'll see. Let's first discuss how this works. What we're going to do is we're going to take some array and a range of values in that array, and we're going to split that range in half, sort one half of them, sort the other half of them, and then merge those two sorted halves together. So the code for merge sort is actually very short. It's only eight lines there. We find the midpoint. We then sort the two halves and then merge them together. Most of the work of merge sort is actually done in the merging of those two arrays together. The way that this will work is we will take the values of those two sorted arrays, copy them into two new arrays, L for the left values and R for the right values, and we will then iterate over those two arrays simultaneously and be inserting into our original array the smallest values from the left and right halves. So how does that actually work? Well, we're going to iterate over an entire range of values in the original array, and we're just going to be checking is the left value or the right value the smaller of the two. Whichever one's smaller, we throw it back into the original array into the correct position and then move further along in that array. There are some other technicalities in this implementation that I will let you guys look at on your own and figure out why they may or may not be important. So let's find out how long this takes. To analyze this, let's first try and figure out how long do these various functions take. In order to do that, maybe we first we identify how many elements we are looking at. We're going to be looking at j minus i plus 1 if we're looking at the elements from i to j, including both bounds. So we're going to let n be the size of the array. Now let's look at the sizes of our, our recursive calls. Well, this first one here, I'm going to put a star next to it is going to be mid p, which is i plus j over 2, minus i plus 1. So that equals j minus i over 2 plus 1. And for our purposes, we'll just say that's approximately equal to n over 2. We're not going to do the sort of analysis we did with the binary search. We're just going to be approximating how big that is. Similarly, let's put a star next to the second recursive call. The size of that recursive call is j minus mid p plus 1, which is i plus j over 2 plus 1, and then plus 1. This equals, similar to what we saw before, j minus i over 2, but this time we get that the plus 1 and the minus 1 cancel. And again, we're just going to say that's approximately n over 2. Now let's look at the cost of merge. If we look at merge, the first thing we're doing there is this copy step. And copy is actually going to run through the elements of the array. And when it's running through those elements, it's going to need to check all of them. So these two lines here are going to copy from first to last. So this will be C, N there. We then do another loop that is all basic arithmetic, and then a for loop again from first to last. So that's going to be C, N again. So all of this merge step would take C, N time. So, what is our recurrence relation? Our recurrence relation will be t of n is equal to cn plus my green recursive call was of size n over 2, my red recursive call was of size n over 2, so I have two recursive calls of size n over 2. And now we need our base case. Let's figure out what that is. It's going to take constant time, but looking at our merge sort algorithm, we have that as long as i is less than j, we are going to sort. So if i is equal to j, that means we're searching an array of size or sorting an array of size one. So our base case is an array of size one. 
Now, let's do this by substitution. So t of n is equal to cn plus 2. Let's perform a substitution, and we get cn over 2 plus 2 t of n over 2 over 2, which is n over 4. Or let's maybe write that as n over 2 squared to make it easier to identify patterns. This equals, distribute that 2, and we get cn plus cn plus 2 squared t of n over 2 squared. I'm going to group those cn's together. So let's do that. We have 2cn. Let's do another substitution. We have 2cn plus 2 squared times quantity cn over 2 squared now plus t of n over 2 squared over 2, which is n over 2 cubed. Now distribute the 2 squared, and we get 2cn plus cn plus, oh, I forgot a 2. I apologize. There should be a 2 in here. Distribute the 2 squared there, and we get 2 cubed t of n over 2 cubed. Now group together the like terms again. And we have 3cn. Pattern looks pretty nice here. We had cn and 2tn over 2. We had a 2cn and 2 squared t of n over 2. 2cn, 2 squared t of n over 2 squared. Then 3cn and 2 cubed t of n over 2 cubed. So my pattern looks like it should be for any value of k, we have that t of n is equal to kcn plus 2 to the k t of n over 2 to the k. Now we need to use our base case to try and find out what that value of k is going to be. So we want that. Want n over 2 to the k, the thing inside of the t, is equal to our base case, which is 1. Solve that for k, and we get k equals log base 2 of n. Whenever we're dealing with recursion, we may need to be careful, so we aren't going to throw out that log base. We're going to actually keep it around. So t of n is equal to k, which is log base 2 of n, times cn plus 2 to the log base 2 of n times t of 1. t of 1 is just c, so let's swap that in really quick. So t of n equals cn log n plus 2 to the log base 2 of n, that's n, so that's a cn there. All of that means that t of n is in theta of n log n. So that's going to be our complexity for merge sort. This is better than the sorting algorithms we've seen already. So we've seen selection sort, and in selection sort that took theta of n squared. This is asymptotically better than selection sort. And the analysis isn't too bad. We could have also used a recursion tree to solve this but we solved it via the substitution method. You can use whatever methods you think are appropriate for a problem. The one thing to be careful of is just getting the sizes right for the recursive calls that we're making. So you do need to be a bit careful there.